Write in the mail, MS sex games from Japan. Collecting without fail, those shoot 'em ups, and that's the plan. He doesn't just collect them, he also codes them too. Join us and we'll go on electric adventures with you. Hey YouTube, Electric Adventures here with my monthly update from March 2019. Uh, time flies when you're having fun. Hope everybody is well out there and enjoying their retro and modern games. Um, I'll start off as I usually do with other pickups, so pickups I haven't really covered with other videos. Um, I'll start off with a couple of uh, uh, movies. Uh, first one here. Um, saw this at the uh, pictures. Absolutely, absolutely loved it and couldn't wait for it to come out on, on disc. I got the 4K version of it and it's Bohemian Rhapsody. Now I've always been a Queen fan um, and this movie really really does try and tell the true story of Freddie's life um, and the band and how they um, you know how they first developed. Um, uh, yes as some people point out they've um, muddled the timeline around a little bit but I mean I just take that that they really wanted to finish on the Live Aid concert. Um, and it's done so well, it's actually still in theatres here locally as well. Um, it shows how um, you know, well-loved movie it is. And it got, uh, did quite well at the Oscars too, um, deservedly so. So, very good movie. Highly recommend it if you're in any way a Queen fan at all. I must. And even if you're not, you might enjoy it as well. Now, second one, I can't hold up the uh, disc because uh, my son-in-law has borrowed it. Um, and that one is um, Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Now that one I didn't get to see at the pictures, so watching it on disc was my first time. Um, I, I did quite enjoy it. Um, I'm not sure where it stands as far as um, comparing it to the first one. It is quite different from the first one. And it does feel like a, um, a story that's the middle of a story, if you know what I mean. And I do believe they're going to have five films, not three, now two. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in the next one. Um, look, I did enjoy watching it, um, and I'll probably watch it again to try and um, pick out some other things. Reasonably good Harry Potter fan. Um, I've watched all the movies so far. Uh, my daughters love Harry Potter. Um, and actually, for my youngest birthday, we're going to a thing called the Harry Potter Experience, um, which is basically where they um, have a bit of a market set up like Diagon Alley. They have a, a dinner set up like the um, you know the dining hall in uh, the movie. Obviously, not to the same size and everything like that. And they have entertainment. Everybody dresses up in Harry Potter stuff and everything like that. And uh, my second eldest daughter is coming as well. We actually bought the tickets to this for both of them for Christmas. Um, so they're looking forward to that. So I'm a reasonable Harry Potter fan, like the universe and everything like that. Um, and, you know, that movie it was enjoyable. Um, I didn't... Uh, my wife and the youngest tried to go see the pictures, but it had finished that week. Um, so it wasn't one that I had to see at the pictures. So I suppose that's the sort of category um, I put that movie in. All right, now, so we have back to retro games. Have some pickups now. My good friend Brendan, who has actually um, given me quite a few things, I try and give him some stuff in return. Um, was at a, um, I believe it was one of our tip shops. He found this. I think he said it was a tip shop, and it's actually for DOS, and it's a collection of games. Um, bit of a variety of games in there, so you've got um, F117A, uh, so a fighter game, uh, Vietti Street Race Simulator, uh, Flight of the Intruder, another Flight Sim, and Silent Service 2. Silent Service 2 games I've definitely played before. There's some screenshots there. It's very, very heavy. Might as well open it up and show you guys. I haven't had a chance to try it yet. So it's all uh, three and a half inch discs. So there's a whole whack of three and a half inch discs. And there are the various user manuals for all of the different games. 
are all in the box as well. And there's a keyboard overlay for Silent Service 2 and various other items and maps in the bottom. I won't take them all out. There's, there's bits and pieces everywhere there. Um, so that was very nice of him. Apparently he got it for like uh, $3 or something like that. So very much appreciated that he thinks of me when he's looking around at these places. I do like my um, PC stuff. It's just not, it's not something I actively go around and look and collect, um, <coughs> nor pay uh, much money for. Um, but um, happy to get new ones. Now, another thing I also got, this game was on special. Uh, now, contacts here, I do not own a Switch of my own. The only one we have in her family is my youngest daughter. Now, she has pretty much stopped playing it. She's more interested in her computer and um, playing Minecraft and um, I believe Sims and things like that and other games on a computer so she has waned off the switch so I may actually get to play it um, I do have two other switch games that are my own personal ones which are the Psycho collections 1 and 2 so this was on special and I really do love the original arcade game and it's still in shrink wrap which means I haven't played it yet and it's the Toki uh, retro collectors edition so actually looking forward to playing this I've actually only just uh, this weekend got the daughter switch plugged it in and charged it and it's in the lounge room um, sitting next to the chair that I sit next to and um, probably later tonight I'll probably plug this in and give it a try so you can actually set it up so you can make like a mini arcade console uh, out of folded cardboard that's what the special edition is I um, can't remember exactly how much this cost me but it was way less uh, that you normally pay for the collectors is about not what you'd pay for a normal switch title which is about sixty dollars I think um, and it was a very good special it actually came from the UK so it's got a sticker sheet sheet two lithographs of the cardboard arcade cabinet and there's a comic book and of course the actual game as well and you can see it's from the um, <laughs> from the UK by the particular markings on it um, I got two books during the month. Now this first one I um, backed on Kickstarter. Uh, I was getting a little worried um, um, probably uh, around the start of February because the uh, author Kickstarter said, oh, everybody should have their um, their books by now. And I went, I contacted him and said, well, I haven't received it. Can you give us some tracking or something like that? He didn't have tracking. Uh, but a month later, and he was going to send me another one, the original one arrived and he did actually send it uh, late November Now, normally shipping from the UK or even Europe is not that bad um, so I don't know what happened but anyway it's the 8-bit annual the hardback edition so it is about uh, so it's reviews by various people of um, homebrews for quite a few different systems MSX, Commodore 64, BBC Micro, Amstrad, CPC, Spectrum and Atari um, and um, they're you know they're written by all different people. It's the quality of the oops, there's a bookmark in there which is fell on the floor. Quality of the printing is really good. Obviously, the writing varies on the particular um, reviewer, and um, it was it was quite a good read. I, I enjoyed it. Um, I'm not. Not 100% sure whether I get the um, whether I get the second one. I'm happy to support things, but um, money's a bit tight at the moment. So he does have a second one, so a 2019 one. Um, hasn't finished yet though, so I've still got time to change your mind. But a bit short of cash at the moment, so we'll have to wait and see. Now also um, got this next book. I just ordered this off Amazon. It was on special. Um, I saw it mentioned. I actually think it popped up on Facebook actually. I don't think I saw it on anybody's channel, but it is really, really good. Um, hardly cost anything. Arrived, uh, I ordered it from Amazon.com.au. So Amazon has started up in Australia for some of their books now, which is great because the freight cost from the US has gone up considerably. And this is a hardback. So I think I paid for under $30 for this book, including postage, which is amazing. And it is called The Games Console. So the gentleman who wrote this book, uh, Evan Amos um, basically has over a, quite a period of time and he has a lot of these systems in his personal collection 
got these systems, cleaned them up, and taken really good high quality photos. And he's done exploded, you know, taken some of the systems apart so you can see the internals. It really is a very good book, and it's written really well. Really, really well presented. And, you know, you get to see the insides of some quite old systems that you'd never uh, get to see. And just beautiful, beautiful photographs um, and writing. Look at those, all the Atari 2600 models there. Just goes through several systems. I mean, you're not going to see exploded diagrams on, on everything, but quite a few are covered. So, um, highly, highly recommended book. Um, and I said, so not only good pictures, but a very good read as well. So, um, now that's all the pickups I have. Um, a little update, I did a video a couple of days ago about the cabinet. Can I do it without doing it the wrong way? Berserk there, berserk. Um, so the good news is, and I said I'll do a proper video in this in the series, is the monitor works. Um, the system fires up, it's got like eight steps it's got to go through and fires up, get up, gets up to step three and stops. So it looks like we have a little bit of a RAM error. So um, just got to order some RAM and try and uh, work my way to the next steps. Uh, voltages all seem good and everything like that. It's, I'm still gobsmacked at how clean and tidy the cabinet is. Um, we'll need to do a bit of rust treatment on the control panel to make sure that doesn't get any worse. Uh, but I'm not going to paint or recover or anything like that. I'm just, it's only in the joins around there that I need to, to put, do some rust treatment and then maybe put a little bit of silver over the top of those. So extremely happy about that one and how well it works. Um, and the little mini cabinet next to it, that's waiting for me to send the monitor chassis off. So most of my arcade machines are now in a working state. Um, there is my um, Space Invaders here. Um, uh, that still needs, I need to, now that I've got the board working, need to clean it up and I need to recap the power supply and that one will be all working. So I'm getting very close to having all my arcades up and running. Um, and now I would like to um, switch to a question. So this uh, was both posted by Lactobacillus Prime, uh, my good friend Mark Vigier, and Steve Benway. Um, on a topic of can collecting get out of control? Um, and uh, well, the short answer is yes, if you allow. Um, so what happens, I believe, collectors go through certain different stages. They'll start out and they'll maybe have a bit of, they'll either have some stuff left over from um, when they were younger, they bring it out, they start playing it, or uh, they maybe they've sold it all and they've got virtually nothing left from their childhood. And then they'll find maybe a lot of stuff, or they'll go around to a friend's place and um, play some stuff, or they'll watch a video and go, oh, I remember that system, I'd really like to get some stuff for. And you start getting things as a matter of convenience. So you might go looking around garage sales, and you'll find a whole lot of Atari 2600 games, um, and or um, some ColecoVision games, or some Nintendo games and you'll buy the lot of it because you want to have a go at it and have a play with it and you know first people when they start collecting some people start straight away with a particular goal they want to collect all the games for a particular system that they had back in the day not necessarily a full set um, but other people um, especially how my collection has evolved I'm down here in Tasmania and there really isn't a lot of stuff around um, and not you know, so my collection started out with just obviously the stuff I already had in storage. I brought it out, dusted it off, and then maybe looked on eBay and, and bought a few items for those particular systems. Um, and then I found um, lots here and there of things. Um, so like at one stage, I, um, I, I got hold of a Saturn. I'd never had a Saturn before. Um, I got hold of a Power Saturn. I can't remember. I believe I bought it locally off somebody who had a couple of games with it. And I thought that's great. All right. So I started buying uh, Saturn games, Power ones, um, on on eBay, um, and off some. Um, I got a couple on Gumtree and things like that. And the collection started to build and things like that. Um, and then probably it was about that time I. Um, uh, I basically discovered um, that I could get a card for the Saturn that allowed me to play um, Japanese versions of the game. So I started, and I could get the games in auctions in Japan quite cheap. 
And what I usually do is I'd get a couple of items that I want and then there's all this other stuff that I'd start bidding on. So then I started getting Famicom games as an example. Um, and I stopped collecting all of the PAL and, um, and normal region games and started collecting the Japanese stuff um, and things collecting in there. But I'm one of those people who who doesn't sell stuff. I really, really don't. I hardly ever put anything for sale on eBay. I do on occasion uh, just to clear a couple of things, but it's also very hard for me to sell things because I'm in Tasmania and I've got to post them to the mainland. I'm now an Australian postal service is terrible as far as the cost is concerned. Um, I just can't be bothered. So I usually keep my stuff and trade with my other friends and that's how I get things from um, from other people is they come around and say, hey Tony, would you like this? And then they look through my trade thing and we trade. Um, it's actually how I build up most of my arcade boards as well. So, we've sort of gone a little bit off topic here, we've got on things. So, um, you know, I reached a particular stage where I was looking on eBay every day. Um, and why was I looking on eBay day? Was I looking for more games to play? Well, um, not really. I had enough games here to play. I was just into the collecting. I wanted to find more games for more systems. Um, and for a while there I'll definitely say um, it got out of control. Um, especially uh, when I became unwell with my neck and didn't realise how un unwell I had become. Um, probably had a little bit of depression there or anything like that. And I was constantly, constantly um, buying stuff. Now I wasn't paying a lot of money for it, but I was getting more items um, that I could comfortably play and I said I'm very uncomfortable getting games and putting them on the shelf without playing them. That's why I have my shelf of shame where um, it's leftovers from um, several large bulk orders that I got from Japan uh, that I've never had time to do the gameplays for and the actual unboxing footage I lost uh, due to a hard drive failure. So I've probably got enough pickups there to last me for ages. Um, and I have, you know, that phase for me, I believe, is finished. Um, I'm really down to, I buy an occasional single or maybe two games at a time now. Um, and um, I'm more after particular titles that I really want to play when I'm looking for those. Um, and I don't look on eBay all the time. Um, pretty much I don't look on eBay at all anymore. Uh, actually, one good catalyst uh, that got me out of this was the main auction house I used in Japan stopped selling. Um, now, there are other places to go, um, but that was my one that I was used to, comfort, comfortable with, and I already reached that stage where I was going, look, I'm buying these couple of items because I really want them, and then I'm buying this other stuff to make the postage worthwhile. Is that the right reason to buy a game? And do I really just want to accumulate more and more titles? And also, I am lucky, I've got a fairly large room here, but I have, you know, I've filled up most of the walls. <laughs> um, you know, so there's a fair bit in here, and I really don't want to expand the collection out too much. Also, um, a year ago, I had a couple of arcade boards. I had my uh, original cabinet, I had my um, uh, Frankenstein Neo Geo, um, and that's all I had and a couple of arcade boards that I could swap in and out. Um, due to a local arcade um, supplier wanting to clear out all these old uh, questionable state boards, um, uh, my friends got a whole heap of those, they bought a couple of cabinets themselves. Um, I came across this cabinet you can just see in picture, which is my original Nintendo cabinet, quite cheaply at a local the, the only local game store that was, that needed some money, so that was a thing of convenience. All my machines are a matter of convenience. Um, and the arcade boards, they've just been traded with my friends. I've hardly paid anything for the boards that I have. Um, I have bought a couple of boards, um, but I've been given a whole whack of boards for doing um, some work for, the, for one of the arcade providers down here, fixing up his jukebox software, and they've just built from there. And then I've discovered that I really do like tinkering and playing and repairing them. And in a way, plus obviously getting my neck surgery and getting that out of the way, I have almost cured myself of this need to continually accumulate stuff. Um, I find myself playing more stuff, um, doing electronics, which I really enjoy, and gradually doing up 
these cabinets and I'm in no particular rush I don't have to get these done right now um, I'm happy like with the Berserk cabinet I'd love to play a game with Berserk and have it up and playing it's just going to take a little bit of time and that's fine because I know I've got it and eventually one day I'll get it working um, so so harking back to the original thing so I believe a lot of people go through the similar states and evolution of collecting and some people will reach the stage that I've recently gone through and then I'll just go look this stuff is controlling me and the only way I can deal with it is to sell it or sell most of it or trim it right down and that can make people feel better because uh, the, an actual collection can become overwhelming um, and itself cannot cause stress if you can't deal with it if, if you know what I mean so um, you know everybody's different and we'll go through different um, you know um, you know different ha has a different way of doing it and has different things that make them happy so I'm you know a lot of my collections so behind the camera here is my uh, Super Famicom games that I got from Japan and my small collection of PAL and American uh, Super Nintendo games I am very happy with the games that I have. I don't really need any extra ones. Are there are some titles that I wouldn't mind to have in the future? There probably are a couple, but I don't need to uh, kill myself doing it. I'm, uh, same as like, there's probably some PC Engine games I'd love to have that I don't have in my collection. But I do, at the end of the day, have a little um, card with an SD reader on. For really, when I play the game, I can play the game. I don't need to spend. Some of these games are, you know, like two hundred or even three hundred dollars just to get one game. Um, you know, now if I saw it at a really good price and an opportunity, and I had the money available, maybe I'd buy it. It's the same with the Saturn. I collected a lot of Saturn, Japanese Saturn games, but they really did start getting too expensive, so I just stopped. I've never, I've tried to never pay too much for any of my games. And of course, one of the systems that I absolutely love is MSX. I showed my recent MSX Games Collection video, which has been very popular. Thank you uh, very much for everybody who's watched that and commented on that. Um, this is really a labour of love, that collection. I will buy more MSX games, but I'm not prepared to pay you know, hundreds of dollars for a single game unless I really, really want to play that game. And even then, I would question it, right? So it's going to progress a lot more slowly because that's what the market's like at the moment. Right, I'll probably rattle off but not on that question, but a related item. Um, obviously, the MSX collection video was uh, very popular. I've been thinking another collection that I could do. Actually, there's probably two that I could do, but one of them would be my SG-1000 SC-3000 collection. Nowhere near as big as my MSX collection because there weren't as many, but I've almost got a complete set. So maybe a similar video where I go through each of the titles would be good. Um, and then maybe I could do my um, another one of my passion ones is my Coleco Vision collection, which is right behind us here. Um, another system that I've got uh, quite a few. I don't have a full set of the original titles by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> Pardon me. Um, I have quite a few homebrews for the Coleco Vision because um, it's a system I love. So I might do a collection video on that as well. Um, also, uh, we'll move on to other subtopics now. I'm writing a new book. So, um, <clears throat> my first book, uh, the um, MSX and Spec Video Complete Guide, uh, which I actually wrote in uh, 1991 and republished on Amazon as a Kindle and printed book, um, has been quite popular um, and has sold quite well. And I've been wanting to get around to writing another book. Now this one's going to be targeted um, to a specific system, um, but may I may end up doing a variation of this book for other systems as well. Uh, and it's based on a lot of the material I've done for Let's Make a Retro Game uh, series, um, but with more um, added reference material and more specifics for the system. So it's for the Coleco, and it's going to be called Programming Games for the Coleco Vision. Uh, specifically starting assembly, targeting assembly language just like my series. Um, I'm probably about 40 or 50% of the way through writing that book now. Obviously there's a lot of technical information in there, um, uh, although most of it, I'm, I'm, as I said, I'm basing it on my Let's Make a Retro Game series, uh, but uh, taking each of the episodes and adding more information, more examples, uh, more pictures and things like that to make it a nice bigger, it'll be a fairly 
big book in the end. So that's a project I've just been slowly working my way through. Now homebrew updates. Um, recently I've been feeling a lot better uh, after my surgery, having more energy, uh, being able to concentrate better. Um, so I upgraded my MSX um, Coleco Sprite and Tile Editor. I'll hopefully throw some screenshots up here. Um, I've specifically added a, um, a tile layout screen uh, where you can take existing tiles, pop them on a screen and save it as a layout. Um, and then you can save that layout either just as straight bytes or you can save it as pletter compression which is um, you know saves quite a bit of space um, and that's working quite well I haven't actually pressed the, the publish button yet um, I just, um, there's one little bug that I discovered last night that I need to fix once I do that I'll publish that out and there'll be a new version available I'll put a link down to the page slight jump up there almost lunchtime um, Right, next, obviously Sydney Hunter for the NES. Um, I've uh, almost finished up to the level, end of level 2 now. Um, I thought I'd have some more time over the last couple of weeks to work on it, but I haven't. Um, probably going to work on it more tonight uh, while watching TV or whatever. Um, but as it, I'm gradually getting more time to work on the homebrew games. And of course, Berserk for the MSX and ColecoVision. Uh, it will be my next primary focus uh, after I've got Sydney Hunter um, sent off to uh, be formally beta test. Um, I'm going to home into Berserk. Now Berserk's actually running quite well already. Um, uh, the uh, you know uh, uh, the mazes get generated. You can your man the um, your main man can run around, uh, gets electrocuted by walls. He can shoot in all directions. Um, and you can exit and go to the next screen and everything like that. Um, the thing I have to work out as far as getting as close to the arcade as possible is how the robots are placed. Um, I've almost worked out the algorithm for that and then obviously what, how the robots react. Um, so they'll need to obviously move, shoot, um, and collision detection between the player and the robots and the robots bullets and the player and the players bullets and the robots that won't take that those actual bits won't actually take very long um, and then we're down to sound effects speech um, jazz up the title screen high score table uh, and those little things and then it's ready so um, depending on how much probably another month working on Sydney Hunter I'd really like to get that finished and out obviously the people that was part of a Kickstarter. I want to put in context here, when that Kickstarter was put out, I was not engaged at the time to write this. I was engaged to write it afterwards. Uh, and unfortunately, I became unwell. And uh, I pretty much had to down tools on all things homebrew for a year because I just couldn't concentrate because of the pain. And it's taken me a long time to get back to the um, levels of energy where I want to do this sort of stuff. But I said, you can, it, it, things are definitely heading back to how I used to be. So I said I enjoy my electronics, I enjoy writing my code, and I also enjoy making these videos. Alright, that's probably enough waffle for this month. I hope everybody is thoroughly enjoying their retro collecting, their modern gaming, and all things, um, all things retro, and um, I continually watch everybody else's uh, YouTube things that I get time to. I probably am a little behind on everybody's videos, but um, I do try and watch as many as I can while I'm doing other things. Alright, I'm Electric Adventures. Thanks to all my subscribers. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.